For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible proclaims that there is an afterlife, a heaven and a hell. And many think that they're going to heaven, and yet they will be found wanting before the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says by Jesus' own words, But Lord, didn't we do this in your presence? But Lord, didn't we do this in your name? And the Lord Jesus Christ will take you and your religion and say, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. I tell you who is crazy, by the Bible definition of a fool, is a man that will reject the free gift of God. Jesus Christ is the free gift of God for eternal life. He is the love gift of God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You may think we are crazy, but we are saved. We are doing what God, through His Word of God, wants us to do. And if you have never believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're the crazy one. You'll stand before God as God will call you a fool and cast you off into outer darkness. The Bible is real. Jesus Christ is real. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. For I have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am washed in the blood of the Lamb, which take away the sin of the world. I have the blessed hope. I have the words of life. The light of this world. The water of life. Are all in Jesus Christ. I stand here and vocally proclaim Jesus Christ. I don't hear you shout and enjoy whatever you got. For with the man, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto righteousness. I am professing with my mouth. That Jesus saves. What are you professing with your mouth? What are you upholding? What do you have that is better than Jesus Christ? What can you come over here and offer me about salvation? What is your free way to get to God? The way to God is through Jesus Christ. It's not through Mary. It's not through the Baptist Church. It's not through Allah. It's not through Trump. It is through the blessed name of Jesus Christ. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. some of you who mock the Word of God, some of you I know when troubles and problems and pain come to your life, you shout out Jesus Christ as a curse. I shout it out for righteousness. I shout it out Jesus Christ for salvation. The wages of sin is death. You will die. And when you die, you will open your eyes to eternity.
eternity. And in the Bible, the eternity is heaven or it's hell. Now, if you think there's a purgatory, you believe in the devil's lie. There is no purgatory in the Bible. You come out, Mr. Catholic, Mrs. Catholic, here's my Bible, and you proclaim to us scripture verse of purgatory. And I can proclaim to you scripture verse about hell. I can give you scripture verse about heaven. I can tell you from the Bible that Jesus saves. And Jesus alone. And we are proclaiming to you today, going all the world and preach the gospel. The Bible says, Isaiah 58, verse 1, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And we are all sinners, for the Bible says, all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. One of you nice people has given us a garbage can for the last two weeks. And yet, I will tell you, if you reject Jesus Christ, the Bible says, Thy, Thou shalt perish. Perish is when you throw it out. You get rid of it. When your milk has passed the age and smells, you throw it out. When the eggs have gone bad, you throw it out. When the vegetables and fruit you buy today sit in the refrigerator or on the counter too long, you throw it out. And yet when you choose to reject Jesus Christ as your means of salvation, God will throw you out and cast you into the incinerator which will burn forever. And ever. We preach hell and salvation through Jesus Christ because we do not want you to go to hell. We want you to realize that hell is agony, it is torment, and you will never, ever get relief. I had the pleasure to be in the dentist's office yesterday and in pain. I cry out to the dead to say, stop! It hurts! And the dentist stopped. And he was even able to give me more shots of Novogaine. There was relief from pain of Novocaine. And yet in hell, the pain of being tormented there is no relief. You will suffer, and you will suffer, and you will suffer. Your muscles, your bones, your nerves, and your eternal soul will cry out of no hope. For Titus 2.13 tells us that Jesus Christ and God are the blessed hope. The blessed hope as a born again Bible believing Christian under the blood of Jesus Christ. And when I take my last breath that the Lord tarries, I will be absent from the body and present with the Lord. When these, when these eyes close to death, they will open into eternity with God the Father through Jesus Christ, His Son. If you have never put your faith and your trust and your belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ, 
the gospel that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. You will die and wake up in a place called hell with your eyeballs, with your tongue in agony and defeat. And you will suffer as such when there is no time. Now, what is the best way I can describe no time? Here's a clock. And I say at one, one o'clock, you can get out of hell. But the clock has no hands. That's eternity. There is no such thing as time in heaven or hell. There are no appointments. There are no minutes. No years. And you can spend your eternity in glory and grace and wonder and no pain, no sorrow. You can achieve all that by coming to Calvary now and receiving Christ as your Savior. Come now, let us, Isaiah 1, 13, come now, let us, God's crying out for you for salvation. We will open a Bible for you. We will show you the Bible definition of what you need to do to be saved. It's not in church attendance. It's not being baptized. It's not who you are. It's not what you are. It's a person that has sinned against God. And a person that has never put their trust in God's Son, who is God. If you are relying on baptism, if you are trusting on attending a church, they will not save you. You have been deceived. If you think, I said this prayer, you've possibly been deceived. Now, if you think you are good enough, if you think you are so wonderful, when the Bible says there is none good, no, not one, now, when I quote the scripture, there is none good, and you think, oh, I'm good, the Bible says, no, not one. For you who thinks that you are defying the scriptures that I am good, the Bible says, there is none good, no, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I will tell you how I know, and you can know you are a sinner. Are you going to live forever on this earth and in the body that you are in right now? See, evolution says everything's getting better. But in ten years, you're going to say, no, it's not getting better when you look in the mirror. The fact is that you buy life insurance proves the fact is you know you are a sinner. Because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And without Jesus Christ, you die and you go to hell. With Jesus Christ, you die and you die.
you go to heaven. I'll say it again. Without Jesus Christ, you will go to hell. With Jesus Christ, you will go to heaven. And then you say, okay, I got Jesus. I'm going to heaven. And yet the Apostle Paul tells us, right into the Corinthian church, that there is another Jesus. you got to make sure you have the biblical Jesus Christ. The Son of God, who is God, born of a virgin, who is Jewish, is the one that's saving your soul. There are many religions that have a Jesus, but not the Jesus. And there are many religions that don't have Jesus at all. And Jesus Christ, born of the virgin, who is Jewish, who is God, and the Son of God, spoke in the Gospel of John, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You cannot approach heaven being a good person. You cannot enter the gates of heaven because you're a Baptist. You cannot enter into eternity with God the Father by who you think you are. You can only enter those gates, those pearly gates, forever by the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. There is no other way. And we stand here preaching the gospel because Satan has fooled you to reject the gospel. And you are rejecting the gospel. When you come walking by and say, well, I was a preacher, that's not the answer. You come walking by, I'm, I'm an American, that's not the answer. The only answer to the way to heaven is by Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world by His gospel, that He died for our sins according to the Scripture. And He was buried, and He arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. You will die. And the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. And you better come to God through Jesus Christ. And nothing, and no one, and not at all, anything but Jesus. Because if it's anything but Jesus Christ, you will face the judgment of the great white throne judgment seat. You will be found wanting. And you will never enter into the rest of God. Never. Because there is no security outside Jesus Christ. And Satan has got people so full, he has got a million ways to God's one way. Satan will have you to be deceived that you're okay when you're not. And when you go to a doctor, would you attend a doctor who will lie to you? Who will deceive you? And yet John 8, 44 says that's what Satan is. He's the liar. He is the murderer. The enemy of God who does not want you to believe on God is his enemy. And God the righteous, God the holy, who is not willing that any should perish, has sent Jesus Christ for you to believe on Him with a 
free will. And as you are attending the Daytona Beach Farmer's Market and you can hear this voice preach the gospel. And if you die and end up in hell, it is your fault. Because you have heard that Jesus says you have heard the gospel. You know what God expects for you to do to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And you reject it. And God will cast you off into hell by the words we preach of the King James 6011 Bible. And I know many of you that are vendors here, you have just turned off this message in 45 minutes to an hour. And then when you continue to reject Jesus, and you stand before God, and you want God to listen to you, He will turn you off. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. You turn off the biblical message of Jesus Christ now, and when you stand before God, He'll turn you off. And then turn you into a place called hell to pay for your own sins. See, you pay for your own sins in hell. Whereas God, Jesus Christ, has paid for your sins on Calvary, and you must believe on Him, but the free will choice that God has given you. Jesus said you must be born again, and yet you have the choice. And the only way to heaven is to choose on Jesus Christ. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You may think your life right now is hell. But I guarantee you, as you continue your life to death without Jesus Christ, it will be hell. But let me also tell you a warning. Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ will get you to heaven. It will get you saved. But it may not solve your problems here on the earth. See, I am not preaching the prosperity gospel. You believe on Jesus and you're going to float across the road and you're, you know, you're going to get all kinds of income. And No, that's not salvation of Jesus. Believing on Jesus Christ as your Savior moves your eternal position from hell to heaven. Let no one here say that I preach prosperity. I preach salvation. And continue to ignore the message being preached will damn your soul. Condemnation, rejection, better to be offended by Christ and come into Christ as your Savior than to reject and not give heed to the Word. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And without Jesus Christ, you will go to hell. And trust in the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. You will be absent from the body and present with the Lord through death. You don't know when death is going to strike, but it will strike. And without Jesus, you will not go to heaven. You will burn in hell 
hell for eternity without Jesus Christ. Tracy, remind me to show you later when we get home about paint in the Bible. It is wonderful. I see with these people. The Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. I don't believe in God. The Bible says you're a fool, Psalms. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And yet the Bible also says, prepare to meet thy God. God doesn't care what you think, and God doesn't care about your opinions. God is God. And He has set a standard for salvation through Jesus Christ. You can do whatever you want. And yet God has sent forth His Word. He has sent forth preachers to tell you, if you do what you want to do, you will suffer torment in hell. But if you to do what God wants you to do, to believe on the lead Lord Jesus Christ, to be saved, you can go off into eternity to be with God the Father. Now let me tell you, the eternal events, the benefits of believing on Jesus Christ when you get to eternity. You get a brand new body that will never age. There are women that spend hundreds and thousands of dollars to stay young. You can do it for free by believing on Jesus Christ as your Savior. That body that you will get by Jesus Christ will never rot, will never die, will never suffer. And as you go off into eternity with Jesus Christ, all tears will be wiped away. Revelation 21. Can I, can I talk to you? Sure. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. You're kind of like yelling at everybody. It's hard to, you know. Well, it's not yelling. It's uh, preaching. So it's what's preaching. What's going on? Well, you need to know. We're here preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Tell me about it. Sure. The fact is that man is a sinner. Okay. We all sin. Okay. Whether we steal, whether we lie. Does God sin? God never sins. He's holy. God says, be holy for I am holy. Holy is without sin. Nothing like us. We can't even... I don't understand what you mean. We can't fathom what God is. Okay. He's just not us. Right. We, we sin, you, we have you, emotions. You're sitting here yelling at everybody thinking that you have the answer, so how can you fathom God by not fathoming God? <laughs> Here's the answer right here. It's in the Bible. God has spoken to us through His Word to tell us. But yeah, we can't I'm understand asking, God. I'm asking you. I'm not asking the Bible. I'm asking you. Well, I'm going to speak the Bible. What is you, the Bible? The Bible is the Holy Word sent by God through His Holy Spirit. Yeah, men wrote the Bible, but it was penned by the Holy Spirit. What I say is, is, is no importance at all. How do you know it was penned by the Holy Spirit? Because I have believed. I have received the Holy Spirit of God no, through no, no, Jesus Christ. I'm asking Christ. you, how, how do you told? know that it, was, it wasn't written by just desert dwellers? Because this Bible's alive. Well, every time we come here, every it looks week... looks like a book. Looks yeah? Like a paper product. Really? really? Yeah. People run from it. This I'm, Bible, I've never you know, run from it. I'm, there, there, I'm still this Bible, in front of well, let me tell you about this Bible. This is the Bible here. I've read the here. Bible. I've read the yeah. Bible numerous times. I've been, I've been. I've read the Bible more than you. Yeah. Have yeah. you ever trusted the, the author of the Bible? Have you ever put your finished trust? I sure have. You have. You put your sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. I've done it all, my friend. You've done it all. I've done it all. Okay. And you and you still can speak questions about the Bible. Well, there's a lot of. Did uh, you just say a prayer? Is it baptism? Is it where you don't, went? Don't no? don't don't question my beliefs. Don't question my belief. I'm asking it's you a question. It's not for you to question what I believe. Well, I'm or questioning how the fact I, is, or how are I you saved? Because saved you can't what? trust in what baptism. What am I saved from? Saved from what? Your sins. What sins? What sin? Yeah, what sin? You don't have no sin? I don't know, do I? Are you, have you do ever you, told you a lie? Me? Have you ever told a lie? Oh, is a lying a sin? Yes. There's yes, lies it is. in the Bible. Yeah, recorded by men who are sinners. No, no, no. There are lies written in the Bible. Recorded by... Men who no, had no, lied. No, no, Men no, that was written by the Holy Spirit. Show me a lie that God has lied. Show me a lie that Jesus Christ has lied. Never. You it's can't find it. It's all in there. It's all in there. Christ never lied. God never lied. God is in there. That God Bible cannot lie. God will. No, it's the not. The Bible is absolutely. You heard it. You heard a liar God. tell you the Bible's full of. No, I've read it. I've physically read so it myself. So what did you do to believe on God to be saved? I'm asking you now. I'm not going to judge. What did you do to be saved? What do you mean? What did I do to be saved? What does anybody do to be saved? They get tricked into believing something that's not true. Well, see, that's not salvation. 
salvation I've, I've, I've is to salvation believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It puts your yeah. sins I've done to his blood. I've done all so that. tell Thank me about it. I, there's nothing to tell. There is something to there tell. There is absolutely nothing to tell. Well, let me tell you something then. Being tricked no, hold on, is hold not on. something to be proud of. I grew up I a wicked that. sinner in the Roman Catholic Church my whole life. The Roman Catholic Church. So you think this is better? You think You're not listening to me. You I'm telling you, here you, I asked you to tell you my testimony. I asked you to tell me your testimony. I'm trying to tell you my testimony. I don't have a testimony. Well, then you're not saying. Okay. I'm about to tell you, you my think testimony. Do you want to be saved? Do you? Do you think I need to be saved? Do you really All think, men need to be saved. Do you really saved. think standing here yelling at people who are trying to enjoy their Saturday, shopping for fruits What's and vegetables, that say? What's is that really say? a good what way? What does that say? Is, you Can you read? Do you really think that's a good... No, I can't. Do you really okay, think so that's a good way? Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice. Why are you yelling at me? I'm not yelling. I'm asking, this is not yelling. I'm asking you a question. Why are you standing here yelling at people who are trying judging. to enjoy their Go in all the no, world. No, I'm not judging. judging. Wait, 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 wait. Time out. Time out. Hold on. No, no, no. Excuse me. If a, if no, man, sir. You do with me. If a man was yelling, you yelling just, your house is on fire. Can I talk? No. Can I speak? No. Okay. All right. Because you're right. And you're sitting here talk. telling everybody they're going to go to hell. You're going to burn. You are sitting here. No, That's sir. Not judge sir. Them. You every guys, time, every time I try to talk, hypocrite. Listen, listen. every time I try to talk, you interrupt me. And you're a me. fucking hypocrite, and you're a fucking oh, well. hypocrite. I asked you to tell me your testimony. You want to do it, so I'm going to tell you my testimony, you and you people. keep, you, you keep, keep interrupting me. I, I had a simple question. You couldn't answer. I answered your question. Jesus, I was judging you, and you're sitting here. Ladies and gentlemen, so I have permission from this gentleman to keep yelling at you through the gospel of Jesus yeah. Christ. Keep doing it. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten okay. Son. Okay. Hey, you too now. You too. I'm sorry that you don't have a testimony. The only testimony you get is one I get. I'm sorry for you. I feel bad. I feel sorry for you. You'll be in hell. Well, what do you care? That's why we're here. Cause we care. Get you out of hell. What a fool. I grew up as a young child in a Roman Catholic Church system. I was disobedient to my mother. I am not happy about today. I grew up as a sinner who lied, stole, and cheated as a child. On April 1987, I came to Christ through the Word of God. I became a born-again Christian. I asked Christ to wash me of my sins and cleanse me. And I was set free. I have been revealed by the Holy Spirit, by Jesus Christ, that this book, the King James Bible, is real. You will not get any knowledge, wisdom, or understanding of the Bible until you first come to Jesus Christ. Oh, I read the Bible more than you read the Bible. I read the Bible. You read it without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit only comes by those who believe. On April 1987, I became saved. The Word of God entered into my heart. And from the second day of my salvation, I preached the Gospel. I was once a sinner, but now I am saved. I was blind to God in a church, but now I have eyes to see. And when you ask of my testimony, I will tell you I was once a sinner. But now I am saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. That is my testimony. My testimony is Jesus Christ saved this wicked soul. I am not boasting of myself. I am boasting of Jesus. I am saved by the glory of the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. What is your testimony? What is keeping you going? That will keep you going in the eternal life after death. Do 
you think the brewing company is going to care about you when you die? They will raise another drunk from the cradle. And maybe three drunks for your one death. Your illegal drugs, when you die, that push will probably never visit your grave. Won't even care. As he'll get other pushers and other druggies. He'll find them. But what is the love of God? That He has sent that once wicked sinner. And this Bible says, Will you go to the world and tell them about who saved you? Will you show them the love I have for them and tell them what I expect them to do? Oh, by the way, child, son, when you tell them about me, they, First Corinthians, they will call you fool. They will think what you're doing is foolish. And many, in the words of Jesus Christ, many will not believe. But that's your commission. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. And many will not believe. And yet I know in my heart of a surety these things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. How do I know? How do I know the Bible? How do I know Jesus? I've tasted of Him. I have glorified God's Son, Jesus Christ. I know by my own knowledge of the Savior, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. I know. That man that came up knows nothing because he knows not God. You know nothing because you do not know God. However you worship God, you don't have the God of the Bible. So you are lacking understanding of what the Bible truly is and says. I've many times asked you, just come out and try God. Step out. Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, step out as, hey, you know, I want to know, but I don't know, but I do want to know. Step forward. But I'm not going to argue with a fool. The Bible says not to. If you are truly seeking, you will not question back. You will look. And you will ask intelligent questions about the intelligence of God. Because death is coming, judgment will follow. And we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus died according to scriptures. And he was buried. And he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That if you were to believe on the biblical Jesus, you can obtain eternal salvation, eternal life to be with God, only by Jesus Christ. Now is the day of salvation. You don't know when you're going to die. But I do know if you die without Christ, 
you will be in hell. Thank you. Thank you, sir.